how do you balance uh, when you have a bad day at office? Very interesting question coming from Ellen, uh, who works for SDB Bank uh, and is also MBA program at uh, Staffordshire University. I think that's a very good question. And I, I want to caveat something. I think I've become better with time. It's not like a skill set that you you intuitively know it sort of comes with experience. So let me caveat um, the answer that I'm about to give. To me, uh, Ellen, I believe it comes in two formats. One is actually the physical fitness plays a role because when I get into the gym, I am able to let go of those frustrations in that session because like I said it's not about um, you know punching a bag or lifting some weights but one is I have some time for myself to, to disassociate and it's very important because when your emotions are heightened that's not a place to be making decisions that is not a place to be responding. So you need for your brain to get out of the highly reactive zone into a much more um, responsive zone. And you are, and the, for me, I see gym as a way to get out, relax, and to be able to think through in that hour. So one is I think I see that one hour as my hour. So that's one. Number two is I think... Um, you know, I, I, I'm a very spiritual person, um, so I engage a lot on a daily basis on um, sp spiritual endeavors, whether it's meditation or whatnot. And that has helped me understand my flaws, my triggers, and I work every single day to overcome the shadows that I have. So I don't think it's only one thing. I think we, like I said, it's um, growth is, it's one is it's, it's sort of, uh, it's always you're ever evolving. Um, but both of these things personally to me have made a tremendous impact. But again, there is no perfect solution. We're all human and sometimes we muck up. Today, we have an exceptional person as our guest speaker to talk about the topic of uh, fitness for higher performance. In this day and age when everyone is very health conscious, um, this is truly a great topic for us to discuss um, with all of you. And so to formally introduce our speaker for this evening, I'd like to welcome Dr. Rohan Dathakorala, the pioneer behind the MBA Diary series. Doctor, thank over you to so you. much. Thank you so much, Ruth. Uh, it's been it's actually an honor for me to uh, introduce such an eminent uh, personality. Um, let me just. Um, I mean, I, I meet her every day at the gym, but uh, I, I never got the chance of actually going through her profile. But when I look at her profile, it's outstanding. Uh, 14 years of amazing experience in brand marketing um, and overall marketing in terms of the whole supply chain, demand chain. Uh, the director marketing of a blue chip company in Sri Lanka at Hamas International, as well as Athlete Axilia Private Limited. And over the last several years, uh, she has developed the digital enablement of verticals for Atlas, Axilia, aiming to drive data-centric decision-making. This initiative has led Atlas, along with its mother brand, Atlas, to create multi-touch points, consumer experiences, and new business models. These endeavors not only help the brand identity new ways to generate revenue, but also accelerate innovation. Before joining Hamas and Atlas, uh, this amazing personality worked at Fonterra, uh, Leo Burnett, and Domino's, gaining valuable experience to global brands. Currently, is responsible for expanding 
the HEMAS consumer portfolio into international markets. Technologically, we'll continue to play a pivotal role in marketing and making our brands much more visible uh, is what she keeps saying. And, and she believes that uh, you need to be meaningful to the consumer as far and wide as possible if you really want to start engaging traction in the marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I mean, a fitness enthusiast, I see her every day working out, doing her gym routines, fitness routines in terms of weights. Uh, and also, of course, um, she's the director of marketing at Hemas International and Atlas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kaushali Kusumpala. Thank you, Doctor, for that uh, amazing introduction. I'm humbled uh, to have been invited uh, for this session. And um, I think I've never thought I would be talking about fitness, um, but I'm, I think it's a very pertinent topic. And I, and I thank you so much for having me as the person that you chose for this topic. Um, so let's sort of dive in. Uh, I want to thank everyone who participated in the mini survey that I shared. Um, I think there were some really interesting insights that came across. And for those who uh, were, were not able to um, attend to the survey, I'll, I'll just give you a flavor of some of the questions uh, that I, I thought were interesting thought starters. One is, I, I was really asking the question, what does fitness mean to you? And I loved some of the answers that I had gotten. Um, most people responded by saying fitness was about whether it's tennis or jogging, uh, whether it's yoga and so on. Um, there is one person who answered quite differently. I'm going to reserve uh, his or her comments uh, for the end. Uh, the second question that was asked is, what does uh, performance mean to you? Again, I think a lot of people spoke of performance in the context of efficiency. How do you achieve a goal? Um, how do you go towards achievement? And then there were also subsequent questions on what have you done for your growth in the last two years and what do you hope to do for your growth in the upcoming two years? Uh, again, there was a lot of answering around, you know, participating in fitness programs or the work that you were doing in your MBA and so on. Now, why I thought these questions were very interesting is when I was thinking about this topic, what does fitness really look like and what does performance really look like? To me, the biggest organ that supports both performance and fitness is our brain. And ultimately, there are several key ingredients in having healthy brain function, which enables us to be healthy and happy every single day. You need rest, you need good nutrition, and you need to exercise your brain in multitude of ways, which includes physical fitness. So when we think about being fit, there is maybe uh, we tend to get a very narrow perspective of, oh, is it just about hitting the gym or is it just about sports? But I think the first part of the discussion that I would like to take up is to uh, have a thought-provoking discussion around is fitness one thing or is fitness many things? The second part of the discussion is to give you some of my experience and how how being physically fit or some of the other uh, activities that I engage in have added back to the human being that I am. And I, I want to take a holistic perspective of what performance looks like in my day-to-day -day life. So that's sort of the two broad areas that I would like to touch upon. So the first question is, what is fitness? And to me, like I mentioned, I think there was one really interesting answer that came through the survey. And this one person had answered and said, you know, fitness is about being both fit physically, but it's also about engaging in things that are emotionally fulfilling. And I think that is a spot on answer. If I take the 
when I think of fitness, there are several things that I do. If I look at physical uh, fitness, I do weightlifting. I think that's where Dr. Rohanta and I have connected. Um, I do boxing. And then I also have started doing yoga this year. Um, and I'll tell you why I have chosen these three um, these three things as the thing that I love. Um, number one, for me, I was not a person that I, that loved gyms. If you spoke to me six years ago, I would not have cited a gym. Uh, it's not that I led a sedentary lifestyle, but for a large part of my professional career, I just thought I didn't have time to be physically fit. Mind you, during my school years, I used to be a swimmer. So I had have done the whole wake up at five o'clock in the morning, go, go for squad practices, end my day with squad practices. I'd done that for a very long time. And even during my university years, I had been very, very physically fit. But I, as I entered the workforce, I just thought that there was no time for anything outside of my work. But six years ago, I changed my perspective around that. Um, I'll tell you why later on, but I'll tell you what these three things have given back to me. As I've done weightlifting, it's not that I am I have a perspective of competing in any competition, but from the day I've started, the biggest thing that I, it has given me is confidence. I don't mean confidence in a way that makes me feel like aesthetically that I feel good, while that is definitely a benefit of, you know, lifting weights and being fit. When I go to the gym, if I can lift five kilos more, I feel confident. I feel stronger. I feel like I'm making use of my body in a way that I never thought I could. Over the last six years, the amount of weight that I've been able to lift has grown by 10 times. Some days my trainers tell me that I'm lifting equally as, um, you know, the average guy. Now, what that does for me is remind me how strong I am. Remind me that the boundaries that I might have set for myself six years ago, three years ago, two years ago, two months ago, are uh, all but a figment uh, that is a part of my imagination, a part of the limitations that I had set for myself because every single day I become better. That confidence translates to everything that I do in life. I am not saying that fitness or weightlifting is the only way of going about it, but I think having a daily dose of positive uh, self-confidence is a good thing. Because when you walk in to, say, a boardroom, you are engaged every single day uh, in debates and discussions. And we are all in a, in a war to have our voices heard. And sometimes, this, this is the reality of workplaces as well, you can walk out of a meeting feeling less worthy than when you walked in uh, into a meeting room. And that is nothing wrong with a workplace. It's simply that, you know, it's simply that work environments have you competing against one another. So having a life outside of work that enables you to fill your cup, fill your emotional cup, make you, make you know that you're worthy, make you feel that you're confident, make you know that you can test your limits and you can succeed, M remind you that every single day that there are milestones that you can surpass. I think that's, that's healthy. I think that to me is what weightlifting has done over the last five years. I, I remember walking in um to the gym i'm not saying that i've never cited a gym before that in my life but i think in the last six years it's been quite transformative i you know if my trainer gave me one kilo or two kilos of weights you know that would have been like quite a quite a task but today you know you know i'm talking about 10 times that weight three uh you know and that seems like a day-to-day -day affair 
So I think number one is the confidence you gain when you're testing your own limitations. Um, the second thing is, I, I think I mentioned that I do boxing. Why I do boxing is honestly because I'm a person who's deathly afraid of heights. Uh, when I say I'm deathly afraid of heights, I am saying you can have five flights of stairs and I'm going to feel a bit shaky. So that's that's a fear that I have lived with for the last 30 plus years. And about a an year ago, I decided that again, facing my fears was the best thing I can do for growth. Um, and I, I don't mean facing my fears only in terms of, um, you know, being able to, um, you know, face or overcome my fear of heights. But last year, I made a decision that I want to get out of my comfort zone, get out of my comfort zone, even in terms of personal relationships that I'm having, whether it's overcoming my fears, whether it's overcoming certain limitations that I had set on myself. So how do I face these fears? And one of the first things I thought was, okay, I, I want to learn to box for two reasons. One is because it's going to teach me things like stability. It is in a, in, it's in a comfort zone, which is, you know, at least I'm not every single day trying to uh, climb uh, Sigiri or Siripada, but it's in a comfort zone, but it's still going to be able to test my agility. It's still going to test my balance. That's something I'm going to do for myself so that I'm going to get, I'm going to be acquiring certain skills so that I can overcome my fear of heights. Now I'm doing certain other things as well to overcome that fear, but this was another way of overcoming that. The third thing I did was to say, I'm going to do yoga. Now, yoga was an interesting choice. Yoga was a choice to say, I'm going to learn patience. Uh, I'm going to learn patience. And yoga was never my first pick because, you know, it's it's sort of, you know, these poses that you hold for a long time. I'm sure there are people who are yoga enthusiasts on this call, people who are very well versed with yoga. Um and I am not because, again, like I said, I just started it very, very recently. So I want to learn patience and, again, push myself into a place that I feel uncomfortable. So I told you three different things that I engage in in terms of fitness and why, what that means for me on a personal end that has nothing to do with actually being fit. Being fit is great. And that is definitely an outcome. But the outcomes that I'm speaking to you about are outcomes to do with, you know, how you feel about yourself and how you respond to life. And how you respond to life is how you're going to respond in, in a work environment. And I believe, of course, this topic was really designed to talk about performance and work. But you don't take a completely different human being to work uh, from the person that you are in everyday life. So I'm just telling you my philosophy and my approach to uh, the type of fitness that I've chosen. Now, as I mentioned as when, when we kicked off this session, to me, fitness is about how do we keep our brain healthy. And right now, I've only spoken about the three different types of fitness that I engage in from a physical point of view. But to me, a healthy brain requires us using both the right and left parts of our brain. And I think generally speaking, and, and, I, and I do understand that, you know, certain perceptions are changing. We live in a world where we really advocate for left-brainedness, which means analytics, performance, win, win, win. Uh, and we kind of forego this part of our brains, which is about intuition and creativity and so on. But if you really think about human history, uh, human beings got to the point of the industrial age relying on our intuition. And when you think of things like creativity, creativity is not about art. Creativity is about finding innovative solutions for everyday problems. So I think, you know, even one of our brands uh, speak of this. Innovation and creativity is important even for a surgeon, 
when he's faced with a very unique situation. In, innovation and creativity is required for engineers and architects and so on and so forth. So the, this creativity is not something that, you know, is reserved for artists. But it's, I think we we kind of really, uh, we, we sometimes have a tendency to disassociate um, the importance of creativity. Now, why am I talking about creativity in a forum that's talking about fitness and performance? Because again, to me, performance and fitness is about keeping your brain healthy, both left and right. So even if you're engaging in a passion, act, uh, you know, some uh, um, something you're passionate about, that's something that you need to actively do outside of your work hours. Because there's a tendency to think that Okay, if we dedicate 9 to 10 p.m. or 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. for our work, that's when you're most productive. That's not what productivity and performance looks like. Actually, performance looks like when you are able to take different types of skill sets and take it into your work, workplace. How are you working more effectively? Uh, you are working more effectively when your brain is able to find new solutions. So whether your brain is able to find more solutions because you're physically fit and you have the right hormones being released into your brain so that it feels refreshed and you're taking that energy into work, I think that's, that's what performance looks like. Whether you're exercising your brain because you're learning to engage in something you're passionate about, whether that's something, a creative project, or maybe it's something that something that's not within a creative field, but maybe it's something that is a passion project. Maybe you just want to collect uh, stamps for all, all you care. But again, you're exercising your brain. So I think it's a collective of things that ultimately makes you fit. Uh, and why does that translate into work? To me, it's threefold. Number one, as I mentioned, there are certain things about having your cup filled. When I say talk about having your cup filled, whether it's about worthiness, self-worth, uh, confidence, these are really, really important things for you to build and then for you to have healthy boundaries as you walk into a workplace. Now, I don't mean confidence where confidence is put on or you pretend to have confidence, but I'm saying confidence because you feel good about yourself. You know what your values are. You understand what healthy, healthy boundaries looks like. You understand to negotiate your value. All of these things come not because you learn it at work. All of these things come because you're learning it outside in environments that enable to fuel your passions, fuel your physical capabilities, uh, and have more meaningful relationships. And all of those skills translate into work and what productivity looks like. And the second component to it for me is, and I, I've learned this lesson the very hard way, I, I have been a young leader. Uh, it really plays into leadership. Uh, when you are not in a leadership position, individual brilliance plays a significant role. Uh, and you, if you are an exceptional talent, just by sheer force and individual brilliance, you can get to the top. But once you get to the top, individual brilliance doesn't matter anymore. It is your ability to, to collectively drive a group of people. That's what matters. Are you able to inspire people? Are you able to create harmony? Are you able to create balance? Are you able to um, essentially create great ideas together? That's what matters. And to me, being physically, not physically fit, but being fit, being being able to bring that creative energy, to bring in that energy into work becomes really important because you're looking at inspiring people and you are not going to be able to inspire people from a place of lethargy. You're not going to be able to inspire people unless you feel passionate. If You're not going to feel passionate unless you have a passion for life. So are you making enough time for yourself to engage your brain, engage uh, your body um, so that your teams as a leader are able to see something that they can aspire to. So I think that's a second, I think, big benefit that um, fitness or um, keeping your brain fit uh, really uh, it, it sort of matters. And I think the third 
third component and the final component, and uh, I think um, I'll sort of leave it at that, is when you are fit, and I mean you're engaged, and you are physically fit, I think you give the best of you because you feel good about yourself. You also give the best of you to the people around you. Um, that could be, again, you as a team lead. It can be you as um, 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 you know, a mother, a father, a husband, a wife, whatever that means. And essentially, we are not on this planet to just do the best for PLs. We are here to do the best we can for our human journey. So if our human journey is, is a fulfilling one, uh, essentially, I think that becomes the idea and you are not going to have a human journey that's fu fulfilling, that sort of divvies up the mind, your, you know, sort of your finances and everything else where ultimately it's sort of cohesive. So I think that also plays a big role. So I think that in summary is what it means to me. And I, I, I think I've shared some of my personal experiences. I have become better in how I relate uh, to my team. I have become better at how I see myself um, and uh, how I overcome my own limitations as a result of the multiple things that I engage with. And um, so I hope that has been insightful. Uh, and uh, because all I can share is I'm not a fitness, um, uh, I'm not a, I'm not someone who knows a lot. I wouldn't say I know a lot about fitness, but I'm I'm very enthusiastic about why it matters to me in my life. I hope that has been useful for this audience. Um, so with that, I will, um, I will sort of uh, leave it to Dr. Rohanta and Rue to see if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Kaushal. It was amazing. Uh, but I love the questions that are coming. And let me read out the first question. Uh, sure. There's a question. I'm, I'm not going to mention who is called, who has said this. She says, uh, Doctor, have you found a person to talk about fitness or have you invited a me to Angela Jolie? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. I think I'm going to raise Yeah, so I, I quickly called Ruth uh, whilst this whole thing was happening, and I said, Ruth, uh, I don't know how I found her, but she's very pretty. <laughs> and Ruth is saying, yes, doctor, I don't know from where you found her. <laughs> okay, the, the, the first question is coming out like this, um, uh, Kaushali. The first thing, how, how do you balance... Uh, when you have a bad day at office? Very interesting question coming from Ellen, uh, who works for SDB Bank uh, and is also MBA program at uh, Staffordshire University. I think that's a very good question. And I, I want to caveat something. I think I've become better with time. It's not like a skill set that you you intuitively know it sort of comes with experience. So let me caveat um, the answer that I'm about to give. To me, uh, Ellen, I believe it comes in two formats. One is actually the physical fitness plays a role because when I get into the gym, I am able to let go of those frustrations in that session because like I said it's not about um, you know punching a bag or lifting some weights but one is I have some time for myself to, to disassociate and it's very important because when your emotions are heightened that's not a place to be making decisions that is not a place to be responding. So you need for your brain to get out of the highly reactive zone into a much more um, responsive zone. And you are, and the, for me, I see gym as a way to get out, relax, and to be able to think through in that hour. So one is I think I see that one hour as my hour. So that's one. Number two is I think. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a very spiritual person. 
Um, so I engage a lot on a daily basis on um, sp spiritual endeavors, whether it's meditation or whatnot. And that has helped me understand my flaws, my triggers. And I work every single day to overcome the shadows that I have. So I don't think it's only one thing. I think we, like I said, it's um, growth is, it's one is it's, it's sort of, uh, it's always you're ever evolving. Um, but both of these things personally to me have made a tremendous impact. But again, there is no perfect solution. We're all human and sometimes we muck up. Samira from Haley's. He's saying, um, uh, what is the combination you with you use with regard to uh, strength training and cardio? And how do you balance that uh, schedule? So I've never been a fan of cardio. I've never. Like, to me, it's dreary. Um, so to me, boxing was the way that I could be consistent with cardio. Um, and now I do boxing once or twice a week. So whereas uh, weight training, I do about two to three times a week. And then yoga, I do once a week. And that's more than enough as far as I'm concerned. I, I try and do a maximum of five, six sessions, but a minimum of three. Um, so I think it's personal as well. So, um, you know, a lot of the people that I engage who are much more educated in fitness will will come out and tell you that, you know, you need to work on a calorie deficit, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Look, it all depends on your body type, what your goals are, and so on and so forth. But having that one day of cardio and really intensive cardio works for me. But for someone else, it might be saying, okay, I need more cardio versus weight training. But I think the biggest thing there that I want to say is if you're doing cardio, find something you love to do. Uh, because again, it's that one hour or one and a half hours is you time. So you don't want to be spending, if you had a really bad day at work, you don't want to have to force yourself to do another one and a half hours or something you don't really want to do. That just sounds really awful. So find what you love to do keep trying new things. Uh, I didn't come across boxing just by chance. It's simply because I've tried so many things that I don't like that I found the things that I like. Uh, so don't be afraid to, you know, have some fun and figure out what you want to do, what you like to do. Uh, super. Thanks, Kaushali. Um, there's a question coming from Shabas, and, and, and Shabas is saying uh, she's actually based in Maldives. Who's also studying for the Staffordshire MBA? Uh, she's asking, uh, whilst you are doing working out with regard to the body, uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, stimulus do you give to your brain uh, uh, in terms of the books you read, or you know, how how do you keep that going so that you are trending your brain? So, I think that's a very very good question. So I I. The stuff that I do is going to sound really nutty to you, but I i mean, the question was personal, so I'll answer it from a personal end. I do a lot of creative activities. So I've, you know, in the last, say, one year, I've done I've done jewelry making course. I've done, I have a biweekly art class that I do. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I do a lot of spiritual stuff. I do various types of meditation. I do visualization meditation, which really taps into uh, your ability to imagine stuff. But at the same time, I would do, um, you know, um, meditations, which are more, much more like breathing intensive. So, and by the way, even breath work is really, really important to stimulate your brain and just to help your body to relax and in, be in a state of alignment. Um, so I do these things. Another thing that I do is, which is going to sound really crazy to uh, a lot of people is I, I read tarot. I don't know if a lot of people know what tarot is, but I read tarot. Um, and, you know, one thing is when you're reading tarot, you have to read a lot about history, uh, whether it's Egyptian history, Hinduism, uh, or you sometimes have to read all these 
different things about different philosophies. To me, it's very fulfilling because some of these things that I read because of tarot are what sometimes I share even with my teams, especially with women, by the way, uh, because I think uh, women have a lot more uh, mentality of limitations than men do. And that's just how the world has worked. And so I have a tendency to sometimes send screenshots or, you know, pictures of these things I'm reading as a result of tarot to some of the girls who that work in my team. And I think it's quite empowering to them as well. So like I said, the things that I do might sound really, really crazy um, and really out there. But I mean, the question was from a personal end. So yeah, so that's what I do. Uh, there's Azad from the UAE. Um, you're having an international audience today, Kaushali. Uh, and, and, he, and, and he's saying, uh, you know, you had a fantastic uh, track record on your brand marketing, uh, starting from ad agencies, moving up to different brands, and now in one of the blue chips and global markets. What has been the key challenge you've had in business, uh, which you are very proud about in solving? Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to say two things, if that's okay. I think the biggest one was actually taking on the role at Atlas Exilia. Um, I took on the role of, at that time, head of marketing. Um, and, you know, just maybe two and a half years before I took on the role of head of marketing, I had just been a brand manager, right? And I took on the role of head of marketing in the middle of COVID, Right. And I had never led a team and it was a pretty big team. It was a 20 plus team. I had never led a 20 plus team. And you were in the height of this this crisis. And on top of that, you know, there'd been a lot of challenges that the brands had faced because of the Easter Sunday attack. So you had, you know, an absolute low in terms of market share. You had shrinking markets, unusual market dynamics. And I remember at that time when the role was offered to me uh, obviously we were all in a lockdown i remember sitting in my um sitting room and i had this discussion with my dad and i said you know what i i, I don't know whether i have what it takes because i this is not like a multinational there's no rule book there's no person to go to if i take on this role i better be damn sure about what i'm doing you know and uh and then there was this moment that said you know what, if you don't say yes to this opportunity now, this opportunity is not going to come your way again. So taking taking on that role and then saying, you know what, I'm going to trust my intuition and my God-given talents because there is no one to turn to. You're going to have to, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Being able to trust yourself. I think I spoke about this, Dr. Rohanta, as well, when I was talking about weightlifting. You need to have such a level of, not narcissism, I think, but you have to have a certain level of confidence that can inspire confidence. You need to have time out for your brain to be able to think. So I think those skills I cultivated when I took on this role, that's one. But the second thing is, like I said, I was highly reliant on individual brilliance until I became head of marketing. And I made so many mistakes along the way as a leader. Uh, and I don't mean in performance. I I think um, as I reflect now and be, being very candid, there were areas where I could have done better on behalf of my people. But I think you learn those skills. You learn those skills. And those have been much harder to learn than learning to perform on the functional. So I think today I'm, I'm a much better leader than I was three years ago or four years ago, but I think those are the two biggest achievements I've had in my career. Uh, there is um, Nipun, who, who is actually working for the um, um, Rio Hotel chain in Tanzania. She's a, gradu she's a graduate from uh, Stafford Trade University. She's doing her second year. Uh, and she's asking, uh, so where do you go from here? Uh, well, she's saying, okay. so I, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it's a bit of a tough one because uh, Kaushali is going to go into one of the top companies globally. 
and she doesn't want to mention it, but maybe in another about two months' time, she might come on the MBA Diaries. Uh, it, it's the world's best company she's, she's going to. So I'm going to redefine that question. Uh, and the question I'm going to toss it to you, Kaushal, is uh, in terms of your academic um, career path, uh, where are you going to go next? And what advice can you give to a youngster uh, studying for a master's program? I think the world is changing so rapidly. Uh, you know, if we were, okay, if we were in 2015, or let's say 2014, we couldn't have imagined that the world would have gone through the transitions it went through in 2020. And then we couldn't have possibly imagined the kind of disruptions that AI started making about a year ago. So when you think of how rapidly the world is changing, learning cannot be a milestone anymore. Learning has to be every day. So I think we need to change the mindset of thinking that there is, you know, there is a time and place uh, for learning and saying, how do I learn every single day? There'll be formal and informal ways of doing that. And when I say informal ways, I'm saying, can you subscribe to a newsletter? And you don't need to read all of it. How can you grab one or two things out of it? Uh, can I equip myself with simple skills? Like, can I learn Canva on my own? Can I learn to build a website on my own? I've done that. Uh, I've, I've learned to build a website on Wix by myself. Now, I, I did that mostly because I wanted to know when agencies speak to me and they tell me something about SEO or whatnot, I want to have a base understanding. So self-learning becomes a very, very important skill. Finding uh, very, uh, very non-traditional ways of keeping yourself up to date every single day. I think that's, that's going to be the key between having an exceptional career and having a linear trajectory. Um, and I think number two is uh, I was talking about this recently as well with a very young podcaster. Your formal learning, uh, when I say formal learning, I'm talking about your MBA programs, your bachelor's degrees. I think that's very, very important because what it teaches you, forget the content, it teaches you how to learn. And I think that's the most important skill, how to learn and networking. That's very, very important. You You do not have a business world that runs outside of networking. Right. The, when you get to a top leadership level, that is what is going to get you to the next phase. So while you do some formal learning, don't underscore the importance of informal everyday learning. And, I, and I've, I'll, I'll tell you a reason why I say that. I don't only speak of myself. Look, I'm someone who learns every day and all the things I think, Dr. Rohan, that you spoke of in terms of the digital activities we have done. I'm not a tech person. I've done because I've read and been inspired and I've been able to hire people into the teams that have the skills that some articles spoke about, but I'm able to engage with them in, a, in an active way. So you have to be both humble and inspired in the things you're learning on a daily basis. Actually, I mean, a uh, question from me. Uh, I mean, uh, things are going very rough right now in Sri Lanka. And, uh, you know, almost like a million people have left the shores of the country. Uh, what what makes you to, to tick to stay in Sri Lanka? Oh, well, I am one of those rare people who studied in Australia and came back. So... <laughs> You know, while all my friends stayed back as well. Um, so two things, I think. One, I think it is in the hardest times that opportunity emerges. And actually speaking, my career has been a, um, has been a testament to that. Um, so I, I, I think uh, if you look around, Sri Lanka has plenty of opportunities. I, I always, when I look, when I travel in Sri Lanka, I look around and I think, 
God has God or whatever you believe in or the universe or whatever you believe in has blessed us with the most magical island, the most magical island. So the only thing we are looked at, we are missing out on is human p- potential and imagination. So if you have the perseverance, imagination, opportunity is abundant because God or the universe has blessed us with the raw materials and resources and beauty, culture, history to make something magnificent out of it. So I, I love our country, but I mean, I'm, I'm also sort of saying that it it's not perfect, but it's it's like what Kennedy said, right? Uh, don't ask what your country can do for you. This is a prime time for us to ask, what can we do for our country? And uh, it's, uh, I think it's time for us to stop playing the blame game, even though blame game is very easy to do. What can we do better for our own sake? Ladies and gentlemen, the director of marketing of Famous International, Kaushali uh, Kusum Bapala, who is, I mean, really gave us some amazing insights in the last one hour. Uh, it's really fantastic making, thank you so much for making time off. Uh, I know you're really, really tied up with so many things. And um, sometimes when I'm when I'm kind of really down at the gym and, you know, you want to quit, I just look at how you are, you know, doing your thing and it just re-motivates saying, hey, guys, I need to go on. I need to go on, you know. So, you know, Kaushali, sometimes it's the, the people around you that actually keeps you going at the gym. You know? When you see others perform, it's it really gives you a good vibe. Um, I wish you all the best on your new challenge, and I'm not going to talk about it, but all I can tell uh, the audience here is that uh, she's going to one of the top companies in the world. Uh, and it just so happened that I really didn't know till today. Um, so uh, it's a real, we are really proud of you, where you're going. And uh, wish you all the very best, um, Kaushali. And thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, Ruth, over to you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Thank you so much, Kaushali, for taking time to be with us this evening. I know you must be exhausted after a very, very long day. Uh, But nonetheless, you agreed to come into our... um, webinar platform and share your insights which i am sure everyone who would be who's in the platform right now and who'd be listening in the days to come will definitely take to heart very simple lessons learned but very impactful every session we must thank our it team for the technical support extended throughout the webinar they too have had very long day and yet they are dedicated to helping us inspire others through these knowledge sharing platforms. So again, um, thank you so much to the IT team for the technical support. I would like to thank the students uh, who joined in, our industry partners and well wishes. And before we wrap up, I'd like to remind everyone um, that at APID we have internship opportunities that we do uh, for our students and if in your companies, you do have any vacancies, do send it across to us, whether it's in business, IT, or law. And also, if you'd like to upgrade yourself, don't forget to walk in or give a call uh, and check out our newly introduced MSc programs. And with this, I'd like to wrap up this amazing discussion for this evening by thanking everyone and wishing everyone a good day a good afternoon and a good evening from wherever you're joining in till the next webinar take care